it's, it's tough. I mean, it's yeah. tough to grow something in this industry. So all these people, it's funny, you know, everyone wants to open a shop or start a brand or whatever. People ask all the time, they're like, what advice do you have? I was like, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and unless you have the money and you don't need it, yeah. it, it's one of the hardest things to do. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. So Blended Barrel is a high-end cigar, bourbon, whiskey, and cocktail lounge. It is very unique, not only in its setting, uh, but in what we provide from just an overall engagement and experience. We have a, a really top-notch humidor that's full of very unique hand-blended cigars. You know, it's just a really unique experience, and I think that's what we've tried to provide is that people that come in here for the first time always talk about how much they want to come back, and they bring friends. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here at a new location today. Blend and Barrel in Sanford, Florida. I have Jared with me, Mark is with me as well, and we have our special guest, Jason, who is the manager here at Blend and Barrel. Thank you very much for taking your time to talk with us today. Thanks for coming out and having us on. Absolutely, so we're gonna talk a little bit about this location, um, you know, how they got started, go through the whole thing. Um, but first of all, Jason, I wanna know how you specifically got into the cigar industry. What's your origin story? Yeah, so mine's weird, which I think everyone says, right? Because it's a passion. It's never somebody's thought that that's going to be their career. Yeah, it's uh, not a normal thing no, to get thrown no. into. Everyone's it. got a weird backstory, I feel like. Everyone I've talked to anyways. Um, so I also run Ash Quarterly Magazine. So that was my entry to cigars as far as career, industry, all that. Um, been doing that for about five years. For here, it kind of transitioned. I did some events here. I've been coming here since they opened a little over four years ago. I was at the grand opening. Love the place. Love the view. I mean, you can't beat that view, right? So then it kind of parlayed into, hey, do you mind running the humidor for some big events we have coming up? I don't know if you remember the big street festivals we did out there. Yeah. So that was kind of my first part of retail, right? Um, which was a blast. Selling cigars is not a difficult thing, in my opinion. Well, especially if you know what you're talking about. You know what you like. You have you know to be knowledgeable, yeah. for sure. But the thing is, people are coming in to buy cigars, right? So if you can't sell them a cigar, there's probably an issue there. <laughs> <laughs> right, you should be able to sell something. Exactly. So, you know, that did a few of those that turned into, hey, do you mind doing a couple days a week? Because at that point, you know, I'm just doing the magazine, which is a lot, but there's a lot of time on my hands. Um, my background was hospitality, restaurant management before that, and I hadn't done that in a couple of years, put on a lot of weight. Luckily, most of it's gone. Still got <laughs> a little bit to go. But, uh, so it was good to get back on my feet and kind of move around a little bit. So the few days a week turned into like two weeks later, Tom, the owner called me up and he's like, hey, we need a GM. And after not knocking anybody or anything like that, but after seeing the operation and all that, I was like, yeah, you do. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, uh, we sat, we talked, came up and uh, it was great timing because Joe Dalton, he came on at the same time as a partner. So during that kind of conversation, Joe's like, hey, or Tom's like, hey, how, how do you feel about Joe? I was like, I love him. That made the decision that much easier. You know, getting to work with Joe, we've known each other for a while as well. So, so they brought you on at the same time, and you guys got to kind of see yeah. this place really be responsible for this place. Exactly, off the, the transition for everything. I mean, and he was another guy that's been here from day one. He definitely spent a lot more time here. As, you know, he was with Surpro at the time. The office was right around the corner, so I mean, he was here almost every day. Like people already thought that he was a partner here. I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, we took officially over July of. What would that be? 2022? Yeah, 2022. Okay. And, uh, so about a year and a half ago. Yeah, just okay. a little over 18 months now and a lot of changes. I think that makes sense because that's around the time we got started too, right after that. And that was, you know, we could tell there was a new shift 
and who was actually working here. So I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and again, not knocking anyone, just some things don't work, right? I mean, that's just part of the deal. So made made a few changes, by a few, a lot, like everything. And <laughs> you know, we're pretty happy with where it is now. Obviously, there's always room to grow, and improve. So I mean, officially, Blend and Barrel hasn't always been the name. No. So it started as Executive Cigar Shop and Lounge. It was affiliated with the executive over in Melbourne. So uh, sister store, name rights agreement, however you want to call it, almost like a franchise of sorts. So that location, actually, they just did their 20th anniversary, I think, this past weekend. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, so they've been around for a while. And Tom Darnell, the owner, he lives in Melbourne. So he would frequent there a lot. And that's how that relationship started with him and Tony, the owner over there. And uh, it was an easy way to open a cigar lounge, you know? They had systems in place. Erica, who was their GM, kind of came on as a partner, like Joe's role, ran this place. So almost turnkey to a degree, obviously I had built out and all that, but it's a lot easier than just opening something on your own, mm -hmm. especially for someone like him who has a lot of stuff going on that doesn't have the time to come in and build that out, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, opening a lounge, really any business from the ground up, you have to think about a lot of stuff. You know, obviously you gotta get the building or you're gonna rent it, uh, all the systems that go into place. And when it comes to tobacco, there's a few things that you need to consider as well, because it's not just like selling any product. You yeah. gotta consider that as well. And that was a great part of that partnership with Executive in Melbourne. They were able to buy their cigars through them, so they were able to get access to certain things that you can't as a startup lounge. You know, mm -hmm. there's certain allocations you can't get, certain accounts you definitely can't set up right off right. the bat. Yeah. So it was an easy way to fill the humidor with some quality product. And, you know, little name recognition, Melbourne's a little far away, but some people still kind of knew it here. Um, it was, and it worked. So um, speaking of changes, like where are we sitting right now? What's this room called? Yeah, so this is our boardroom. Uh, it's our private members lounge. It's a fantastic room. So this room has 24 hour access. Obviously the door, I think you can see on the camera behind you all, that goes out to the main lounge. Once we're closed, it is locked. But there's a side door here from the front that they have a little app on their phone, put it up on the door, just opens right up, then come in two in the morning, doesn't matter, have drinks, there's beer on tap, there's bottles of wine that's included in the membership, they have their locker, which most of them stock with some good liquor as well. You have your cigars, TV, everything you need. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I know that there's, you know, some lounges do it. It's not uncommon, but I would say that it's definitely not most. So this is definitely something special that you can get. I mean, I think around here, this is the only place in Orlando that I'm familiar with yeah. Cigar Lounge that has 24 hour access to members. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe Cigar Hustler has something That's similar. That's too, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a little different, obviously, and each one is, you know, you kind of cater to your clientele. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something special. We have a few members that gave up their office and they pretty much work out of here every day. Yeah. They love them, they're day one members. So it's, it's just a fantastic group of people back here. Most of them are business owners, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of, throwing ideas off each other. It's fantastic. Yeah. And what's unique about yours, I know they can't see this, but it has a, like a secret door. It's behind a bookcase. Yeah. Right? So that, that was the door that we lock at night that you could probably see the yeah, door. Yeah, so this door right here on the other side, it's like a bookcase yeah. with some stuff on there. It's kind of like a Mathers, right? A little, little hidden door. Mm -hmm. It's like a little uh, speakeasy kind of. Which is hilarious because, you know, we still get a lot of first time guests, which is fantastic, right? Um, people that, live around the corner didn't know we're here which is kind of just bewildering to me but they'll see us open that door and go in and you just see their eyes get all big like what in the world was that it's like, well because even today when i walked in like i know that's the door but when i walk up to him like it, it just looks flat like yeah. it doesn't even look like it's a door absolutely we love it yeah that's awesome so what is your favorite cigar personally or one of your favorites i know sometimes it's hard to choose but what's something that you find you're smoking a lot. Ooh, uh, you know, like you said, it's hard to choose just one. There's always the time of day, the occasion, whatnot. Um, <laughs> probably one of the things that's popped out most to me lately is the Papa Saka from Dunbar mm. Tobacco and Trust. Yeah. I just, yeah. I love that cigar. Yeah, the whole Mi Corita line's fantastic, but that black is just, now I did over Christmas, I, I smoked some crazy stuff. So I'm sure you guys all I saw have. on Facebook yeah. you did your 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cause there's always these cigars that you have and you're waiting for an occasion. Right, you're like, when am I gonna smoke this? It needs to be special, but there's never an occasion that's good enough. Right. So finally, I was like, I'm just gonna pick 12 of my craziest cigars and smoke them. 
and the uh, Mikorita Black Unicorn was out of the 12 I smoked, that was hands down the best one. Oh my god! I'm looking forward to trying that because we've had the unicorn, the original one. Yeah. Yeah. They used to be like a birthday tradition for us. We used to buy each other the unicorn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, it might change. Maybe now we have to do, we gotta do know, the Silver Mesa universe. and then the black and all that. Yeah. Are you, do you guys like mild cigars much? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, I mean, I used to be like a full body guy. Yeah. And then I kind of transitioned to medium and then I had like a phase where I was doing light body. So I would say I'm, mostly medium body okay but i mean i go all over the spectrum absolutely so that was the thing like same you know i definitely i was full bodied for the longest time lately i found myself going a little bit more medium most of the time um but i'm typically not a light smoker you know just yeah. so the sabre mesa brulee unicorn was absolutely fantastic construction all that but for me i was just i need something more yeah you know but if you like that profile you're gonna love it so maybe too, if you want to smoke like a really expensive stick first thing in the morning, that might be perfect. Absolutely, because yeah. I'd say the Sabre Mesa Brulee, the the regular, yeah. not the Unicorn, it's probably my favorite Connecticut. Hmm. Yeah, I've had a few of them. I, favorite Connecticut, it's it's hard to choose. Well, I will say the Alfonso's pretty good. Absolutely, it's definitely yeah. up there. Adventuro is real good too. Yeah, yeah. There's so, definitely some good ones out there. But yeah, like you yeah. said too, Dunbarton and Trust. I mean. They've had a great year too. Yeah, they yeah. killed it on award season, man. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I still see, like even today, I saw more awards for you know Steve and then Barney Trust in general. And I'm just like, man, this guy's killing yeah. it right now. I, yeah, he's on top of the game right now. He really is. Uh, but I mean, if you speak to him, he, he knows what he's talking about. He's paid yeah. his dues. He's done some crazy things in the industry. He's got a pretty cool origin story, right? Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that he knows how to make good cigars. Of course, yeah. And then, of course, I don't know if we mentioned it, but there is a full bar here. Mm -hmm. You know, beer, wine, liquor, all that. Uh, obviously, we're drinking, uh, we got some old fashions. I think you got a double gallon. gallon. 12. Yep. What are you drinking? So, I got a espresso martini and, and uh, Diplomatica. I was in nice. a rum mood tonight. Okay. Just on ice, or? Yeah, just on a big cube. Very nice. So, yeah. nice. I, I keep it relatively simple. Yeah. I don't typically drink rum, but whenever I leave the country, I will bring back a couple bottles of Havana Club. That's the best rum. Oh it's my really gosh. good, yeah. Yeah, super smooth. And for the price, I mean, I got it uh, this past trip. I got it for like, I think twenty six bucks for yeah. a bottle. Not oh, bad. No, it's very inexpensive. That was my one regret on my Cuba trip was not bringing more back. Yeah, I was like, what? I was an idiot. That's exactly what happened to me. I'm like, I can bring two or three, and then we go through the first one, and then it's like, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then once you only have so much left, you don't drink it because there's only so much left. Well, it's like you're saying earlier. There's never the right occasion exactly. to finish that bottle or smoke that cigar. See, for me, the right occasion is me waking up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll smoke it. That makes it easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm super bad about saving cigars. I have like no eight cigars just because I, I go through them. But, I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, yeah. there's so many people that will say like, don't wait for that occasion because yeah. what if that day never comes? You know, right. what if something exactly, happens yeah. and then that cigar just sits there? So. Yeah, for me, I go through phases where I do really good with keeping cigars aging, and then after like a year or two, I'm like, it's been in there for a year or two already. Like, you know, I might as well smoke it. Like, you know, so like recently, I'm on that trend now where it's like, ah, oh, there's a Padron that's been in there for a few years, or you know, there's a this or that. So it's very easy for me to cave, absolutely, especially after it's been so long. And there's a certain point where what else is it doing, right? right. You know. Age can only do so much. Yeah, it, it's getting bored in there, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta pick it up. But have looking fun. at you every time you open the humidor. <laughs> yeah, and we get lucky too. Sometimes we'll go into a lounge, maybe a bigger lounge that has a lot of stuff that's like hidden away that keeps getting passed, and you find those hidden gems that's where it's the been best. there for five years yeah. or ten years. The cellophane's like, super dark. Yeah, you know? yeah. <clears throat> so we, it's uh, like we'll we'll come across that stuff enough. Where I don't need to age my own cigars for 10 years. Exactly. Because that's the weird thing. Each lounge sells differently, right? You'll go to a lounge and Dumbarton just doesn't move there for some reason. So there's one I went to. They had original Mikorita releases. I was oh, like, wow. oh, yes, please. Um, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it just depends on the clientele, too. Because, you know, some lounges that you go to, the clientele mostly is, I only smoke Padron. I only mm -hmm. smoke Davidoff. You go to other lounges and it's people that will smoke generally... You know, different stuff across the board, whether it's high end or lower end, boutique or mainstream. Uh, I think this is one of those lounges where it varies more. 
you have a different clientele, yeah. you know, a mixed clientele. So uh, oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's been fun and challenging, you know, trying to curate that humidor just right. Especially, I mean, our humidor, it's not the smallest, but it's definitely not the biggest. So you got to be a little bit picky about what yeah. you bring in there. Uh, so that's one thing we're kind of always changing to a degree what we carry. But the biggest thing is we just get the feedback from our right. customers. Yeah. Well, what are you liking? What do you want? Yeah. That's the biggest mistake you can make in retail is stuck in the humidor with what you like to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we don't do that. And two, I mean, most lounges, at least the ones that know what they're doing, is if something's not selling, you know, eventually they'll figure out a way to get rid of it, whether they discount it or whatever. But then, you know, bring in something new, try that out. I mean, even really big lounges, they have, you know, the BOGO deals or whatever. Yeah. This has been in here for years. No one's buying it. We got to find more. We got to make more shelf space. Absolutely. No, we've we've had to do some things to move certain stuff, and um, they're not bad cigars. Right. They just for whatever reason, you know. Well, there's, I mean, the kind of like you said, you went to the one lounge, and all of the Dunbarton and Trust stuff is just there. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, these are great cigars. Why are they not moving? Because you know everyone's palate's different. Obviously, depends on the clientele. So you might have a cigar in your humidor that's fantastic, but for some reason, the clientele just don't want it. Uh, well, and it's funny, it's kind of a catch-22. So what we do here, um, and we're out of them at the moment, so that's a good thing, but we made grab bags, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it was $20, you either had two or three cigars in there, depending on the value of the cigar. Um, but it was always typically, you know, at least a 25 to $30 value. Most of them were probably like 32. Um, so it was discounted, but you didn't know what you're getting. And I kind of had that concept of, do you remember when we were younger, at least when I was, they had those little mystery bags for kids yeah. with a little question mark on it and you Easy open it up and be a little toy yeah, and you yeah. didn't know what you were getting. It was fun. It was part of the whole thing. So we did that. People loved it. But the catch 22 to that is then they're trying the cigar that they didn't try when it was in the humidor and now yeah. they're loving it and they're like, well, when are you getting these back? And I'm like, well, we had them for two years. Damn. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. So... Well, at least you know now it's a good way to promote like newer cigars. Oh, absolutely. So, and there's certain ones that we had gotten rid of that now we're like, all right, we're going to bring that line back in because yeah. it got people to smoke them and now they're wanting them. Yeah. So, speaking of cigars that are in your humidor, we are smoking one right now. You guys might recognize it. It is the Basis Cigar. So, recently, the Basis Cigar has partnered up with Blend and Barrel. So, they're an official Basis retailer. So, if you're in the area, you definitely got to come check these guys out, smoke a Basis. But also, I mean, we've been talking about it. They've got a you know, great selection of stuff. I mean, we've seen the humidor. You guys definitely, like you said, you have to make sure that it's curated properly. And all the stuff in there is you know, great. Thank you. So, I mean, it's awesome. What do you think of the cigar? I'm really enjoying this. You know, it's, it's been a little bit since I had one. Obviously, uh, I think I had one with you guys when you first started. What was that, a year and a half, two years ago? About a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I know we came in here like when you first came on board. Yeah. And then about half a year later or so, we came in again. So now yep. we're officially here. So yeah, I mean, you've had to try it over the years. Yeah, basically. and you know, it, in the earlier days, and I think we told you this, that, that was when we were still affiliated with the executive in Melbourne. Right. So all the stuff we bought was through them. So that made it just so tricky. And that was uh, you know, part of the reason for the separation. So we could curate that humidor the way yeah. we wanted to. Um, so now that we could do that, we could bring in stuff like your alls. Yeah, it's fantastic. I remember too the first time we came in, and it was it wasn't you, it was someone else that had mentioned, uh, you know, we needed three different blends to even consider getting in here. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, and and the question we had too is, I mean, like you said, the humidor is not massive. It's not small, but you definitely have to be picky. So it's like if we have three different blends. You might not even have, you know, room yeah. to just Would throw you in whatever. Yeah. 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 So. Well, and if you have three blends, how many sizes are they? How, right. you know, yeah, then yeah. you're filling up 10% of your humidor with one brand. And then a brand like Padron, I mean, I'm sure you, you don't have every cigar from Padron. It's always no, possible. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, you, and that's, again, where you got to kind of curate it and figure out what people are liking. And a little bit what I like. like the 80th, we're, we're going to have the 80th. I love the 80th. Of course. It's hands yeah. down my favorite. I go back and forth between the 80th and the 40th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. It's hard. Because it, it used to be the well, 80th. Right now, I think it's the 40th. Well, it used to go back and forth with me until I had the, the 50 year oh, anniversary. Yeah. And after yeah. I had that, I was like, oh man, this is. This is that's almost tier. like, you, you know. You, you can't count that. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's just. <laughs> it's not fair. Right. That's yeah. like its own league, basically. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Which, by the way, I love the new name way better. No, no offense, uh, you know, yeah. the old name. Again, but, we're not uh, knocking them. You know, yeah, yeah. Come off that way. So, but, how did you guys come up with that name? So we went through a bunch of iterations of it, right? Um, but the the thing that we want to do is really speak to who we are, who our customer base is. You know, executive to me could come off a little hoity-toity to a degree, right? Like, oh, yeah. do I need to wear a suit? And I even had people say that, like, oh, I, I kind of didn't go in there because I thought I had to be dressed up, had to be in a suit and tie. No, not at all. So we have a blend of clientele that comes in here. And that's kind of where that came in, right? We, we don't just cater to executives. You can come in shorts and a t-shirt, you can come in a suit, it's, it's fine. Everyone's kind of welcome, everyone fits in. You know, so the blend of the clientele, obviously blends of cigars, blends of whiskey, so that kind of, was there and then barrel just kind of made sense again with we do a lot of barrel pick on the whiskeys and tequilas done um rum as well so that's one of the things we kind of like doing so again it went through a few iterations but then when we landed on blended barrel it just kind of we are like yep that's it we obviously we got some feedback from some of our regulars and then uh we did the launch party for it and unveiling i want to say september I think so, yeah. It was around September, yeah. October yeah. kind of thing. Kind of feels right. Yeah. I could be way off. It could have been mm. August. I don't so, know. so if you, <laughs> you change the name of the lounge, will you change the name of the executive boardroom to like... So it will just be the Blend and Barrel boardroom. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. Keep uh, it simple. And we've toyed around with some different ideas with that, you know, that, that we might end up doing. You know, you see those like branded lounges and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So there, <clears throat> there might be something there. But again, we, we don't want to just mimic somebody else we kind of like creating yeah. our own path yeah we could be original and make it like the the base you know the base. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no yeah i mean i think with any business but especially in this industry now it's best to be yourself and not try too hard to copy other people it's always great to take advice or take ideas here and there but the minute you try to mimic another lounge or if you're a cigar brand mimic another brand you run into some issues because you'll never be that brand or that lounge. Exactly. So you might as well be the best version of yourself. Well, and that's something that, you know, me and Joe talk about all the time that we do that we don't really see a lot of others do. We go to other lounges because they all do something right. Yeah. Right. Or they wouldn't still be around. So we go and we support them. We buy cigars, we buy drinks, whatever. And we kind of, if they're willing, we pick their brain a little bit. Yeah. Uh, if not, we just kind of look around. We're like, oh, you know, that really works. We, we like that. Maybe we could do that, but tweak it this way, or vice versa. We see seven, we're like, we never want to be that way. So let's make sure we do the opposite of that. Yeah. Uh, like I was at Cigar Hustler earlier this afternoon. Um, we're just we're those people. We like supporting the industry as a whole. Yeah. And we understand that cigar smokers like traveling and seeing different lounges. Yeah. We know that our clientele is doing the same. They're going to other lounges. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Now we want to be their home lounge, right? Because everyone has a home lounge that, yeah, that's yeah. kind of their base. That's where their locker is. That's, you know, where they go. Like your second three. home, you know? Exactly. You know, they're there three times a week and then they cheat on us one or two days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're okay with that. As long as it's majority here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, too, like, kind of like you were saying earlier, even you guys go to different lounges. I mean, me personally, and I would say most cigar smokers, if they have the option, got to try different lounges every now and then. I mean, you can't go to the same place all the time. It no. gets boring. You, you don't go, go to the same restaurant every day. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. When everyone well, has different stock, I mean, right? Jared does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I routinely go to the same cigar lounges and the same like restaurants all the time. Okay. So, but you do experiment. Yes, right? I do all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, we we have a, a tendency to go to uh, Grafton quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. And get the Smash Burger quite a lot, but I mean, of course, you got to change it up. You can't just be eating Smash Burgers all day. Yeah, like I, I was just there before I came here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna have to try it. I've never been. So it's the the new Liam's Liam's Patrick. Oh, down. okay. Yeah, that's what they turned it into. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. just a little more upscale. Uh, food's great, and then they have like a kind of like you guys a little speakeasy. Nice on the side. Yeah, so good okay. place to check out. And you recommend the Smash Burger? Smash Burger's great. Yeah, can't go wrong with a burger, man. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah, they 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 do really good with that, and their fries too. It's like um, they're not steak fries. They're kind of like uh, wedges almost. Okay. Thin wedges though, so it's pretty unique, but it's a great place. But yeah. So uh, actually, another question I wanted to ask is, um, you guys obviously you do events, yes, and stuff like that. Um, what is 
one or two of your biggest events that you do regularly that you guys have a great time doing? Yeah, no, it's great. So that was one of the things that we wanted to change, you know, when we took over and started making all these little adjustments is being a little bit more strategic about our events. Uh, so we do Latin night. That's hands down our best regular event. We do it the first Saturday of every month. It's been a home run. So that event, we have live music outside, weather permitting, obviously if it's raining or something, yeah. kind of change it up. Um, typically it's a DJ that plays some like salsa, stuff like that. People are dancing, there's lights, fun time. Next month we do have like a, a live band that we actually had before we made the mistake of having them inside. Mm. Um, our inside is not very conducive to live music unless it's like right now out there, there's a guy playing sax, fantastic. Uh, yeah, this one is, instrument, maybe the keyboard. Yeah, exactly. Like, this was yeah. a three-piece band. They're, you know, Latin style, which is very kind of loud and fun. And yeah, we, we might have blown some people's ears out. Uh, <laughs> so like, we need to get them on the patio. So they'll be out here uh, February 3rd. That's the next one. And then we always have a cigar brand tied into it as well. We get a Latin food truck out there serving up. And we always kind of change that up as well. But it's always some kind of Latin, you know, whether it's tacos or empanadas, mix of whatever. We had a Latin burger truck out recently. Mm, so yeah, we kind of, again, can't go wrong with burgers. Uh, so we switched that up a little bit, but it's just hands down, one of our best attended events, fun, everybody loves it. Uh, you can't go wrong, there's dominoes on the tables. You can you know, play dominoes, great cocktails, great view, the music, just the entire experience. And that's what our events we wanted to do is create experiences, mm -hmm. right? So the other one would be what's going on tonight is Wind Down Wednesday. So That's right, yeah. Yeah, every Wednesday we have some kind of live music in there. And again, it's something that kind of accompanies the experience instead of takes over. So whether it's saxophone, uh, we've got a classical guitarist that's just amazing, a keyboardist that does a great job, a few others that we kind of rotate through there. And then we do wine specials as well. Um, a lot of times Naomi, our bar manager, will kind of roll out a new wine. And it's just a laid back, very nice vibe every single Wednesday. That, that was my next question. Every Wednesday, I would assume. Absolutely. Yeah, very nice. And then we do other one-off things, like we're hosting a uh, Cigars and Cars or Cars and Cigars event on the 10th of next okay. month. So they're actually closing down the street out there and bringing out some really cool cars. So that's going to be a blast. I yeah, we were actually looking into that event, so I put that in my calendar because I was like, you know, absolutely. Nice yeah. cars, cigars, you got to do it. Yeah. And, and so you know, it's like Wind Down have, Wednesday, always have live music? On Wednesday? Yeah, always. Yeah, every Wednesday and okay. uh, pretty much every Saturday as well. Yeah, yeah. You every know, Saturday. every now and then somebody cancels at the last minute, sick or whatever, but typically every Saturday. Now outside, it's every, it's only two Saturdays a month, we're outside. Um, that's just part of the HOA agreement that we have because okay. there are condoms yeah. above us. Yeah. So, yeah. but if it is inside, we do try to keep it this kind of style to where it's again, part of the experience, not taking over. So you can still have a conversation. Yeah. You know, that's key. People like to have conversations in cigar lounges. Of course, yeah. I mean, I, pretty much anywhere I go, if I go somewhere and the music is blaring, whether it's a restaurant, coffee shop, whatever, you know, it's kind of annoying because it's like, I, I almost don't want to talk to you now because I can't hear you. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. yell. You know, it's like, just turn the music down a bit. Just a little. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, that one instrument inside, perfect. It's fantastic. We were here last week. Uh, you had, uh, I think someone was playing guitar. Were they playing guitar last week when we were here? Yeah, the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. yeah, last yeah. Saturday. Oh. So she was originally going to be the outside music, but I don't know if you guys remember the weather that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody was, was sitting not, outside. It was yeah. a little chilly for Florida. Oh, it was freezing, dude. <laughs> freezing, and, well, yeah. And then look, we parked down there for whatever reason, and we walked basically two blocks over oh. here. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, you regretted that pretty quick. Yeah, it's, mm. this is the two weeks of the year where Florida actually gets pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny because uh, – did you guys grow up here or always been yeah. in Florida? Yeah, yeah. Been, yeah. So I grew up in Kentucky. We had real weather, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. seasons and snow and all that. You get used to this very quickly, and 50 degrees here is so much colder than 20 degrees in Kentucky. I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah, it's the humidity. People it don't is. realize. Yeah. It's so different. And then, too, like right here, we're by the water, so there's a lot more wind. You got that breeze. Yeah. Which during the summer, is fantastic. Right. During Florida winter. Maybe not so much. Yeah. <laughs> and like my parents, they live on the beach. So when I visit them, pretty much from like late October till probably February, if there's any wind at all, it's freezing. But yeah, during the summer, it's the best place to be. Absolutely. 
And then I think, didn't you guys come out for the um, Florida Man Radio event we did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. stuff like that. You know, those packed. one-off. Those are like annual events. Yeah. I mean, it was packed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a good event. It was crazy. It was yeah. a great event. Florida Man Radio, also a local, obviously Florida Man, local uh, radio show here. Great guys. Don Miller Show. That's our buddy. Uh, definitely go check them out. But yeah, so you guys have their annual event here. Yeah, Stogies and Spirits. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, that... that Jared said it packed. Oh my god! I mean, yeah. It was like a nightclub almost towards the end. We were all standing around. It, like, was, it was man, it, and it was fantastic live music. There was food truck. I mean, it was one of those again where you get here and you have everything you need. Yeah, and then some, you know, celebrities and stuff like Bubble the Love Sponge was here. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, these guys are kind of like local celebrities, so everyone wants to come and meet them. And obviously, if you got cigars and whiskey here, you know, why not? Oh, absolutely. And that's been one of the really cool things about being here. We've gotten to do so many unique things like that that you wouldn't normally be a part of. Like this room was actually used to film a music video in um, oh, okay. over a year ago. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. What so, music video? Or what was the artist? Yeah, so uh, the main artist was Bravo Gator, which I had not heard of at the time. Um, but the featured artist on it was Struggle Jennings. And okay. I'm sure you know the name Jennings, Waylon Jennings. Mm. So he's his grandson. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, he's got some... Some big uh, shoes up there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it was, it was fun, man. I mean, it was really cool to be back here, seeing them make a music video. Like I've never been a part of that. Yeah. Ever. Um, so you had to check it out because I mean they did it out there too. You see the whole lounge, cigars and all that. I mean, and they're both cigar guys. They're smoking. They bought a bunch to take with them. Good Were you guys. in it? Was that? Were you a part of it? Like, were you in it? No, um, oh. I I wasn't. Uh, now a cigar that I was affiliated with was nice so okay. with the magazine i did a cigar with alec bradley so part and, of you was though yeah so you know <laughs> i made sure my logo got in there exactly there you go. <laughs> well so tell us more about ash quarterly we kind of mentioned in the beginning oh yeah so it's a cigar magazine we've been doing five years now it's been a lot of fun we literally just hit the fifth anniversary um started it to try to do things again differently you know you'll hear me say that a lot i i like being different sometimes it's not a good different so i adjust um, but yeah, it's been a blast. So like we started with not doing ratings at all, um, because I don't love the way ratings are traditionally done. Yeah. There, there's a bias, whether it's money or whether it's your just taste profile. Right. If one person saying, oh, I love the cigar. Like, again, I'm not a Connecticut guy. So if I'm the only one rating that cigar, Connecticut's never going to get that great yeah. of a score. Um, but then we ended up doing a consumer driven component. So now consumers are the one rating cigars. And it was something that before here, I had retail tobacco license. We did essentially like a Cigar of the Month Club. But part of coming on here, we kind of transitioned and moved all the Ash Quarterly stuff here. So every month we do uh, Sunsets and Cigars, first Tuesday of the month. And that's when we do that sampler pack, sell it through Mm -hmm. here and our website as well. And that provides the ratings for the cigars. So it's still consumer driven. And just again, everything about it different. Not a ton of ads. Uh, I hate that when you flip through a magazine and just half of its advertisements yeah or yeah, you have yeah. a double page ad like nobody looks at that you flip so what's the point of you know so again just did everything different it's been a lot of fun uh, passion project makes yeah. a little money so that's nice yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. is yeah. It like a criteria of like what you guys give out for people to rate sorry horrible timing to take a sip of that drink <laughs> uh, so again it's kind of like how i do with the humidor here you don't fill the humidor I don't fill that sampler with stuff I love. So yeah. one of the things that I was big about, especially when, you know, I was curating it completely myself, you know, with having the humidor, you kind of limit it to a degree. Um, but it also helps us introduce some new brands that we might not have, you know, just traditionally in the lounge. It's like, Hey, let's do it through that pack, get the feedback. And that's almost like a testing ground. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but I always tried to have at least one, what I call legacy brands, you know, Fuente, Padron, yeah. Perdomo, yeah. all those big Drew Estate, the things you could get in almost every lounge, everybody knows them. And then at least one cigar that hopefully someone's maybe never heard of. So that's been a lot of fun to be able to introduce some cigars to people that maybe they're local brands here. Um, like another one we carry, King Musa, that went out and you know it's a, it's a smaller local brand and it got great feedback. Um, or Hefe, we, we did them before they were ever in this lounge as well. and great feedback on that one as well so it's kind of cool you know these people will reach out and they're like oh my gosh i tried the cigar that I, I can't get here and they love it so because let's be honest the big guys aficionado they're never going to rate those cigars 
Never, right? yeah, never. It's not going to happen. You got to be in a certain amount of stores and you got to buy a certain advertisement. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, that goes back to the money part. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, why I didn't want to do ratings and why when I did, I did the way I did. Mm-hmm. So that there's no one that could say, oh, that was bought. Right. You know. Well, because too, like, we kind of touched on this, but when you rate a cigar, like, for example, you might not like the flavor, but the construction of the cigar might be perfect, everything like that. But then you have that bias of, well, I didn't like the taste. Exactly. So, number one, you got to have different people, you know, try it. I mean, Mark and I, we have a completely different palate sometimes. Yeah. He's like, oh, I love the cigar. And I'm like, ah, not so much, or vice versa. So, it would be fair for me to just rate the cigar yeah. or him to just rate the cigar. Well, and that's what was and still is so interesting seeing those ratings come in because I'm the one that compiles it and everything. And you see these just skewed numbers. Like, so, so the way we do our ratings is it's separate. Like, there's appearance, draw, construction, and taste. Yeah. And they're all equally balanced. If you look at anyone that does reviews or, you know, blogs or whatever, typically taste is 50% or more of the overall score. I'm like, that's crazy. That's your taste. You yeah. know, like you were yeah. saying. And the construction's flawless. If the draw's perfect... And it's a beautiful cigar, not just the band, but, you know, we've all seen ugly cigars, right? right. I mean, the wrapper is a little off. Yeah, or, you know, you could see patchwork on it, stuff like mm. that. Um, if all that's performing, but the flavor is a little not in your profile, it's still going to score well. Yeah. So that's just, you're spot on. Man. Yeah, because someone out there is going to like that cigar. I mean, there's a bunch of cigar smokers out there, hundreds of thousands, millions of cigar smokers. Yeah. There's going to be a good percentage that likes that flavor profile. Exactly. I mean, I did a review recently where I didn't like the taste of the cigar. It wasn't for me. But the ash was great. The construction was great. Great wrapper. So you got to acknowledge that and say, hey, listen, this cigar is really, really good, but the flavor is just not for me. But this is something that you're probably going to like. And yeah. that's okay to say. For some reason, people think it's not okay to say, I don't like the cigar. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's bad. Right. It just means yeah. you don't like it. I would say it's like, it's very hard to have an actual bad cigar. Exactly. You know what I, mean? I mean, even Gurkha still sells, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, there, there's a few that I actually like. The Nicaragua yeah, yeah. series, Aganor's yeah. Leaf makes that one. It's, it's mm-hmm. a great yeah. cigar. It'd be uh, nice if there's like some kind of fancy app, kind of like Vino for wine, but for cigars, where you have people from all over the world inputting their own, you know, their own like, how they feel about it. It's interesting. There's, you know, people have tried that. Um, where it gets tricky is like, I think it's, Maybe Apple won't allow tobacco-related apps yeah. on you know the Apple Store. There is an app, Box Press, but you have to like go to the internet and download it on your phone. So it's not it's through the app based, store. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's one cigar scanner. Yeah, that, that's out there. Um, cigar Dojo does a pretty good job with kind of consumer-based reviews as well. Um, but the app part, yeah, it's just tricky with all the tobacco rules that these companies come up with. Yeah. Which is like everything else in the industry, right? I mean, well, even social media, I mean, we deal with it a lot. All different platforms. Some are more strict than others, but if you're smoking a cigar, I think the, the I mean, the main issue is if you try and sell the cigar, that's exactly. what the problem is. A lot of people on YouTube, they can review cigars all day, but if you put the link in there, if you tell people to go buy it, that's where you have an issue. Well, and you can't do any kind of paid advertisements. No, of course exactly, not. Exactly, yeah. At all. But you know what's funny? You'll see sponsored ads from Cigar Aficionado on Facebook. True. That is true. Interesting, there, right? There are ways around it. I know that. But uh, I haven't looked too much into it. But, I mean, Cigar Aficionado, you got to think about it. Huge company. Oh, At absolutely. least in the cigar industry, for sure. Um, they've obviously figured out a way to get around it. And, you know, I think what it boils down to is they're not so much a cigar magazine anymore, right? They're a lifestyle magazine. Celebrities yeah. all the time and all that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that might be that differentiating factor yeah. that kind of skirts them by it. Yeah. They probably had to sit down with a few people and really convince them anyway because, I mean... And money talks. Cigar aficionado. Like, yeah. You know what the magazine's about. Well, and, I mean, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, their title, cigar, was the bold, big word. Yeah, that's Aficionado true. was small underneath. It's completely reversed now. Oh yeah, cigar yeah, is very yeah. small. Aficionado is very big. I predict, man, by the end of twenty twenties, it's going to just be aficionado. Cigar will be out of the yeah. name. No, that might yeah. Focus more on maybe wine and liquor. Mona and will be like able that. to open them up to other advertising avenues. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, for them, I think that's the smart play. Of course, yeah. I mean, they're already so big anyway. But of course, if you can get bigger, exactly. 
But yeah, that's one thing that that's a hurdle that we've had to try and you know overcome. And cigar, anyone in the cigar industry in general, has to figure out how to advertise, quote unquote, legally or within the guidelines. Yeah. So how do you advertise your magazine? So you know, word like of mouth? everybody else, it's word of mouth is the biggest thing. You know, doing events, stuff like that. Like we're gonna have a booth down at uh, Great Smoke with Abe. You know, next month. So stuff like that is huge. Yeah. You know, one of the things we did at PCA this past year is we partnered with Karen Berger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are familiar with her. So with her brand on Kiki and Karen Berger cigars and all that, and created a QR code sticker that they were giving out to all the oh, lounges okay. that came by. And you know, you'll see it in our lounge here. We have it right up at the counter. So looks like a magazine cover. Obviously she's the one on it. And then scan that QR code takes you to the page to read every issue for free. So trying to find innovative ways to get it in people's hands without the paid ads because you just can't do it. Yeah. So it's, it's digitized and printed? Yeah, so we kind of moved away from print a little bit with all the supply chain issues during COVID. Um, so before that, we were in a little over 100 lounges. We provided it completely free, which costs money. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's not cheap to print magazines. I will tell you guys that right now. If you're <laughs> thinking about doing anything print. We looked into it. It's, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, it's funny, the first time I sat with Steve Saka uh, and was telling him about the magazine, he was like, you're doing a print publication? And I was like, yeah, he's like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> I was like, Thanks, man. Like, um, you know, it's funny. So we went from that to now we advertise the magazine, we chat, he's a great guy. Uh, but yeah, that was his first comment to me. Um, and Very I, honest guy. <laughs> well, and it's funny, last year at the trade show, I went up to him, I was like, hey man, you were right. Um, so we, we kind of moved away from that because what was happening is we published it digitally, sent it out to the printers, by the time it came in from the printers, the next one was going up digitally. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, this is just, it's a waste at that point. You know, it's so behind. And let's be honest, most people are doing it on their phone anyways nowadays. Yeah. Uh, not, I love print. We, all, we still do some print, like we carry print ones here, send them out to, you know, some people that advertise, stuff like yeah. that. And I always keep some. We'll have a bunch of great smoke to give out as well. But most people are looking at it on their phone. Yeah, I think print is great, especially if you go to a lounge and you have, you so know, you read the magazines there. But realistically, yeah, you're right. Most people are just gonna go to Google, find it on there. Well, and you know, we carry my magazine Ash Quarterly, we carry Cigar Aficionado, we carry Cigar Snob on the lounge. And Cigar Snob and Aficionado, they're still there when the next issues come in every single time. Now granted, I'm here, so I'm able to talk to people and I'm like, yeah, take it, you know, but that one's always gone. Uh, people, they're not reading them that much. It, it's crazy. People like it on the phone, and that's one of the things I did. No paywall. You don't pay for a digital subscription. It is free. Yeah. Every issue. I don't understand why you're going to charge somebody to look at something on the phone when the whole idea is to get readership up because you're going to get better ad rates, right? Right. Exactly. And that's where the money is. You're not making money on subscriptions. So do you host a digital book or magazine on your website? Yeah. So every issue's on there. You go. You see every single one. Click it. Flip through. Um, I thought about publishing like other magazine apps or like eBooks or like, Amazon. No, or... you know, I played around with like Amazon Kindle and stuff like that. There's still those regulations with the tobacco side of it that gets a little tricky. Uh, so I've played with it. I tried it. It didn't really get the traction because I don't think cigar smokers are really going on that, right? Cigar right. smokers yeah. know where to find their stuff. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting. And I don't, this is, I love the flip book kind of style that you see. But have you ever done that on your phone? It doesn't, it's tiny. Oh, yeah. You can't see it. So I got rid of that ASAP. So essentially your whole screen is a page. Flip, flip. Because the flip book, the transitions are great. It looks like a page. Yeah. yeah. But you can't read anything on it. Right. Well, too, what's the point? If it's on your phone anyway, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just all for looks and stuff like that. Like, you're not actually flipping a page. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah we have a... We do have a cigar book that we made with Amazon through Kindle and stuff, but you're right. I mean, the only way we're getting traction is through promoting it ourselves. It's still on there, but I mean, they're never going to promote it. No. Organically. It's never going to be a recommended for anybody. Um, so It's you, more of a marketing tool anyway, so it's like, yeah. You know. I mean, everything in this industry is word of mouth. Yeah. And I mean, you guys know that with the brand, I'm sure. Oh yeah, for like, sure. It's tough. Yeah. We definitely, the further along you get, the more you realize the benefit of who you know, word of mouth, stuff like that. Because, yeah, I mean, you can't mass advertise or anything like that. No. So it comes down to talking to people in person, 
And even like over the phone is not, you know, great because if they don't know who you are, it's like, who's this guy calling me? Yeah, cold you know? calls are the worst, right? Yeah. No, nobody yeah. likes that. It typically doesn't work. Right. And that's with most businesses too, especially nowadays. It's like, if I've never heard of you and you're calling me, you know, hang up. Like that's, yeah. that's what it no, is. Absolutely. And you know, with a brand like you guys have, it, it's tough because the only paid advertising you do is some of those magazines. And I don't know if you know the rates for Cigar Aficionado, but I'm sure you're not going to do that anytime soon. Right. <laughs> so it's not cheap. No. Mine is just... <laughs> Thousand dollars. But, but yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's yeah. tough to grow something in this industry. So all these people, it's funny, you know, everyone wants to open a shop or start a brand or whatever. People ask all the time, they're like, what advice do you have? I was like, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, and, unless you have the money and you don't need it. Yeah. It, it's one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. The, the money is a big thing. People don't realize how expensive it actually ends up being because you might be able to get low entry, but to keep it going, the money's going to, you know, start piling up. Yeah. And you're traveling around, you know, I don't know how much you guys go like out of state or out of town where you have to pay for a hotel room Yeah, exactly. and, and all yeah. that. Like how big of that order do you need to get placed exactly. just to pay for the trip? Yeah, I mean, if you sell like four boxes, that might cover your trip for one person. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So I, I couldn't do that. So anyone watching, I'll never be a rep. Ever. <laughs> Ever. And I don't handle rejection well. I don't want to cry in my pillow. Oh, that's another thing. You have to be able to handle yeah, rejection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go to 10 lounges, nine of them are saying no. Exactly. It's, it's tough out there. Yeah. Yeah. The big thing, too, is follow-up. I mean, you have to follow up. Because some lounges that we've gotten into, like... I would talk to the guy three times, whatever, and then I'd call him like a few months later. He's like, oh yeah, we were supposed to do something with that, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, because I mean, again, there's a lot on this guy's plate. You know, he's got to run the lounge. Maybe he's got his own cigar brand. So following up is one of the biggest things because they might have just forgot or, you know, it's not the right time, whatever the case may be. So that happens quite often too. So, you know. Well, I mean, you said it with us. I mean, you. We're here at least three times before it came in, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it could be so many different reasons, like like you saying. You know, for us, most of the time it's it's shelf space. You know, everybody's fighting for it. Yeah. Um, and that's every lounge. Well, too, like kind of like you said, a lot of people are either opening up lounges or starting cigar brands now. So shelf space is a big thing when it comes to all these brands that are out there now, especially in Florida, even Orlando, Florida. I mean, there's a, there's a ton now. Like you said, King Musa, he's local too. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just the, the local brands. It could be, you know, some of these brokers and reps that we deal with that have multiple brands. Right. And they're like, hey, do me a favor and, and bring this line in. And you can't do that every time. Right. It, I will say it's worse with liquor. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, Ten a week. Hey, can you bring in this bottle, this bottle? No. There's, and same thing with our liquor. There's only so many bottle spots on the shelf. Right. Uh, and you guys actually do have a lot of liquor space too yeah no I, i'm grateful for that oh my gosh i mean I, every I time i come in here i'm like what do i want to drink like <laughs> it's a good problem to have exactly yeah you know and but we try to you know curate that as well and bring in a mix of stuff that people know because i mean with liquor people typically want to know the brand it's harder to sell yeah. boutique liquor than it is a boutique store. that's very true yeah uh but then you know some are home runs for us like i don't know if you guys have had redwood empire but we brought that in and it you know when we brought it in, it still wasn't super well known. Still not really well known, but it's yeah. kind of picking up that following, and it, it was a home run for us. Yeah, I saw a post about it recently from you guys. I, that was when I found out. Oh yeah. So, yeah, well that's when we got all the allocated bottles. Yeah, which I mean, and their bottle designs are just gorgeous, which yeah. you know people buy with their eyes. Right? Exactly. That, yeah, especially in this industry too. I mean, a lot of ninety percent of it is marketing. Oh, 100%. You know, whether yeah. it's the box, the band, whatever, the story behind it, that's the threshold to get in. Because there's a lot of high quality, great tasting cigars out there that people don't know about just because either you know they're not marketing it to a mass extent, they can't get in cigar aficionado. So the, you have to be able to convince people to try it. Yep. And then once they yeah. do try it, that's when it's like, oh, it is good. Yeah, and you know, if the design looks great, the packaging, the cigar and all that, that makes it easier. But one thing that, that we found, man, you get the tobacconess on your side, it's the best thing you can do. Like, I don't matter. Yeah. I, obviously, I like talking to you guys and chatting with you and all that, come in and smoke a cigar at any time. But when you get the tobacconess on your side, yeah. 
that's when it moves. And that's so surprising that some brands don't realize that. Mm-hmm. Like they'll come in and ignore the tobacconist. Like, yeah. where, where's the manager? Where's the owner? It's like, dude, you just made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's the one selling your cigar. Exactly. Well, that's what we, when we go into lounges too, I mean, we treat everyone like they're the decision maker. A hundred, because you never know who is. Yeah. You know, we had, uh, and I won't say the brand or anything, but we had a, a rep come in one day and me and Joe are sitting in there chatting. This guy comes in and I know the guy. He walked right past me and went straight to Joe. So I let them talk and I'm just sitting there smoking a cigar, doing some paperwork. And uh, about 15 minutes into the conversation, he's trying to get the order from Joe. And Joe's like, oh, well, you gotta talk to that guy. That's his decision. And the look on the guy's face was like, ah, oh, shit. And I'm like, yeah, man, like, bad, bad move. So he like, yeah. do the whole like, spiel and talk all over again. Oh yeah, and, like- <laughs> and literally just walked right, and I even said hi. Didn't yeah. even acknowledge me. And you heard the whole thing too, but you made oh, him yeah. say it again. I sat there and I'm just, yeah. I'm waiting on it. I'm like, this is gonna be great. Uh, so even though you heard him, you made him speak and do the whole thing all over Oh yeah, right? I, gotcha. I let him go on his face. <laughs> Hopefully it humbled him and he learns for the next lounge, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, cause I don't want any brand to fail, but I want people to learn. You know, yeah. there's certain ways to do things, certain ways not to, and your approach is the right approach. You treat everybody like they're the ones making the decision. Right, exactly. Cause too, I mean, like you said perfectly, those are the people that are actually working the humidor most of the time. So if you have good interactions with them, then, you know, actually we've said it plenty of times, when you meet the owner of a brand or whatever, it helps you resonate with that cigar more. So if, as an owner, if you do that with, you know, people that work at the lounge, it's easier to make sales at yeah, the lounge. Absolutely, we've had it the other way where me and Joe both really liked a, a person and the brand and we wanted to bring it in. The staff all said, that guy is an asshole. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And they explained some situations. I'm like, all right, we're not bringing them in because they're not gonna sell it. So it's just gonna sit there. Yeah. So obviously that yeah. wasn't us, right? You know? No, that was, <laughs> that was not you guys. Well, I was gonna say too, um, you know, one of the guys that works here who I'd never met before, I walked in and this was right when he picked us up and he goes, oh, they're on the shelf over there. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, so I talked to him, great guy and you know, we're building a relationship right now, but I mean, he super. First of all, when we talked about him earlier, he knows what he's doing. Great yeah. guy. Yeah. So I mean, and that's with any business, but especially this business, relationships is a huge thing. And with anyone in the lounge, if you bypass your employees and go straight to the owner, you might end up with a situation like you said. Well, that yeah. guy's a dick. Whatever. Oh, and we've had it the other way where there's a brand that you know maybe we don't love the cigars, but the person was so great great with the guests too. And that's the other thing I was gonna mention, you get a couple of the regulars on your side, they're pushing your brand. Um, Luciano's a great example. I don't know if you guys have smoked much of their stuff, but the Maria Lucia became one of our top sellers because one of our regulars loved it and he's going around telling everyone, go buy that, go buy that. So, you know, I told my rep about it. I was like, hey, like this guy's big fan. They reached out directly to him. And now that guy's even more so an ambassador for that brand. Yeah. Well, because Luciano too, I mean, uh, Luciano himself and the rep, that's exactly what they do. They take time to talk to the people that are at the lounge, whether it's an event they're at or just hanging out, and they make them feel like, you know, family, basically. Absolutely. That's what he did to us. I mean, he sat down with us, like, when the event was dying down, talked to us for a while, and that's, like, the best way to get people on your side. Absolutely. He's a down-to-earth guy. Yeah. You know, I think he's I really... a little intimidating with the suit and all that. He's kind of fancy. <laughs> but uh, he's a good guy. He's actually the cover of the magazine that we just put. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. nice. Didn't they, have, didn't they have an event recently where I won like a bunch of stuff? I won all the yeah. raffles that night. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Won like humidor, free cigars, cigar did boxes. Did you really? Yeah, it was a great night. Which one was that? It was a few months ago now. Um, yeah. That was at the other store in Lake Mary. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, he's a cool guy though. He, uh, he actually gave us a bunch of free cigars too. Like we were yeah. talking to him. He's like, here, have this. We were like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, Thanks, we, we told him about our brand. So he was like, oh, these are some new samples that we're working with. Let us know what you think. And that's another thing too is like when you're in the industry people take you a little more seriously on your opinions yes because you know you're on both sides now you're a consumer but you're also on the manufacturing side so you know kind of like we were talking about earlier cigar might not taste good but it burns great great construction or it's got great flavor and it doesn't have the construction so people tend to take your opinions more with uh, heavy weight because you know you have that experience of that side of the industry Absolutely. And what's kind of cool, and not all, but I think the majority of the people in the industry, they're 
very welcoming and they're they like to mentor people yeah like people want to give advice they want to help you they want to see you succeed you know it's a lot of industries you're the competition yeah exactly. so they're doing everything yeah. they can to not have you succeed but it's kind of neat we all grow together you know exactly yeah and even like customers too you go to most lounges 90 percent of the people that are there we're gonna have a conversation with you be nice to you that's just the industry in general. It is. It's unique. I, I've never seen anything else like it. Yeah. It's a great equalizer, you know, everyone says. Yeah, it really. I've is. had so many conversations with people I probably never would have talked to if it wasn't in a cigar lounge over exactly. a cigar. Because it is a very niche thing that you kind of have in common. It's a very Absolutely. great icebreaker. I mean, what is it, 1% of the population smokes cigars? Yeah. It's like such a small, yeah. it's not like a bar. Almost everybody goes to a bar, right? Yeah. Cigars, you have something in common. Yeah, for us, we yeah. kind of get used to it because like, we go to cigar lounges all the time. Everyone we know smokes cigars. But when you think about it that way, 1%, probably less yeah. of the population well, yeah. actually smokes. It probably yeah. is less. And it's interesting because the biggest part of that you know, 1% or 0.7% or whatever that number is, the majority of them don't smoke like we all smoke. Right. They smoke occasionally for celebrations yeah. and, you know, oh, I smoke for my birthday. And that's considered part of that population that smokes cigars. Right. You know. And they only know about like Padron or the really popular ones. Yeah. yeah. They buy, you know, a couple cigars a year most. Yeah. But that's the majority of the cigars that are being sold. Right. And, you know, a lot of brands and stuff, they don't think about that. And they spend all their time marketing to guys like us. It's like, no, you want to market to those people that don't buy it as often. Right. And even for us in our case, uh, the base of, uh, you know, is tied around Albanian history. We've had customers that don't smoke cigars, buy the cigar just as like memorabilia or something, or they be like, hey, I know someone that smokes cigars who's also Albanian, so I'm gonna give it to them. Yeah. Because it's just really cool to see, you know, Albanian heritage, for example, you know, tied into a product like cigars. Which goes back to that story behind the brand that kind of helps move it, right? Exactly. Anyone can make a cigar nowadays. Exactly, yeah. The threshold has become a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, we did it. <laughs> I mean, I've smoked some cigars that, you know, somebody, oh, I started my own brand. No, they bought a thousand cigars from somebody that right. they also made for yeah. 10 other people that they just got a label made for. Exactly, yeah. Like, that's not making a cigar. That's... Yeah. And that's the thing that, I mean, when we started, the option was given to us where it's like, hey, these are already made. You just need a band to put on them. And right away we were like, well, we can't do that. I mean, First of all, no effort goes into it. And second of all, it's not your product. I it think it's like you're cheating. Yeah. 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 But two, it's not unique. No. We can say this cigar is unique because we had it blended ourselves. But if we had gone with a cigar that was already blended, first of all, I don't think it would be as good. But second of all, like you said, maybe 10 other brands have that same cigar. Yeah. If your goal is to just sell at flea markets and farmer's markets, absolutely. Go oh, for yeah. it. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter. You don't even need the band. Just, yeah. you know, But if it. you're wanting to have your brand, then have your brand. Be a part of it. That way you could speak to it. I mean, how many samples did you guys go through before you landed on the blend? I think uh, four different variations before we decided on the one. Yeah. So glad you didn't say, oh, dude, the first one was great. No. <laughs> the first one was not great. Yeah. That's another thing too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think we got lucky because some people go through 10, 20. But we kind of, we were fortunate enough to know what we like and what is like a good quality cigar. I mean, we made it based on the fact that we want new cigar smokers to enjoy it, but also people that have been smoking for a long time to also enjoy it. So we had a lot of knowledge going in so where it wasn't just like, oh, you blend me something or let's just do this. You know, there was a lot more thought behind it. So it was easier to pinpoint right off the bat what kind of cigar we want. Absolutely. And I think you nailed it on that. Like, so the cigar, it's not intimidating or aggressive to a new smoker. It's not going to overwhelm them. It's not going to, oh my gosh, like I've never smoked cigars again. But it still has nuances that you can pick up if you smoke cigars regularly and you right. enjoy that. So and that's the tough thing to do. So, good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, we're going to wrap it up here. If you are in the area, if you come to visit, whatever the case may be, definitely check out Blend and Barrel here in Sanford, Florida. One of the nicest lounges that you'll go to in the area, for sure. So, come over here, pick up a basic cigar, pick up some of their other great brands that they have here. Whether it's boutique or mainstream, they got a great selection. 
And thank you again for allowing us to come, take the time to talk to you, talk about the lounge and all that. I mean, great conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, guys. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors. Crafted for the newcomer and the connoisseur, the Besa embodies excellence at every level. Each draw, a journey through rich, nuanced flavors and a smooth, unforgettable finish. Base a cigar, where tradition meets perfection.